Right now, we intend local residents share their thoughts on the location of an Amtrak station as the city of Madison lays out its passenger rail station study. Plus, why Judge Jennifer Doro is seeing her share of critics just a week after entering the race for state Supreme Court. And the unique way Rock County officials are making Narcan more easily accessible, hoping to cut down on overdose deaths. It's all coming up right now at 10. Thanks for joining us tonight. We'll have those stories in just a bit. First, we are getting ready for our next round of winter weather expected over the next couple of days, prompting an alert day for tomorrow. Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti has our certified most accurate forecast. Actually, during the day, it'll be fine. It's tomorrow night into Friday that we have to watch out for the potential for a wintry mix of precipitation that will quickly change over to accumulating snow. Last night, the problem was fog. There was a time lapse from the WIC Skycam. Thick fog that gradually lifted through the day, but the clouds remained, and that held temperatures down uh, quite a bit today. We're only in the middle 30s, but as we take a look at visibilities now, uh, just some light fog to our south and to our west across Iowa and Illinois, but most of southern Wisconsin away from Lake Michigan seeing uh, very little in the way of fog. We'll see some patchy fog overnight and there's no precipitation around, so that's good, but that will change by about uh, this time tomorrow. High temperatures today near 40 in Janesville, and it was in the 40s closer to Lake Michigan and Milwaukee and Kenosha, but to the north and west, La Crosse didn't get out of the 20s, so the cold air is there. In fact, it's already down to 4 degrees in Black River Falls. Uh, La Crosse is at 17, while Madison's still at 30, and temperatures are above freezing in southeastern Wisconsin. Dane County kind of right in the middle, still 34 in Edgerton, but down to 29 in Sauk City and 30 degrees in Cross Plains. The alert day is for tomorrow night into Friday. That is for about one to four inches of snow. Could be a little sleet initially tomorrow evening, but that'll change over to snow, and all of southern Wisconsin will be affected by that snow. Overnight, look for some patchy fog. Otherwise, low temperatures dropping to about 24 and then those temperatures holding nearly steady overnight. Again, it'll be dry during the day tomorrow, but it's later tomorrow night into Friday that we have to watch out for. I'll time out the precipitation chances in just a few minutes. Gary, thank you. Tonight, residents of Madison started signaling where they would like to see an Amtrak station potentially set up shop. The city laid out its passenger rail station study, and our Armand Raman found there's a lot of excitement and a lot of opinions about where those trains should pull in. That's right. These are the six locations identified to welcome the four daily stops from Chicago and Milwaukee. UW campus, where the current depot is, downtown underneath the Monona Terrace, First Street, the Near East Side, the former Oscar Mayer plant, and the Dane County Regional Airport. Officials say getting a head start puts them at better odds to get federal funding. So I think I can say with confidence that Madison wants passenger rail service. <laughs> While excitement is building up steam, it's about darn time. The city is just starting down the track to bring Amtrak service to Madison. Six station locations spanning from the east to the west side have been identified for residents to voice their opinion. You know, I really like the uh, Monona Terrace station idea myself. I said I know that when they were building Union South leading up to 2011, they kind of created a rail platform-like structure there out front. The city and higher consultants wish to narrow those choices down before launching feasibility and environmental impact studies. But at the end of the day, we have to pick a station that works for Amtrak and that works for the Federal Railroad Administration. That's sort of the bottom line. What Amtrak needs is space. A standard platform is 700 feet long, and the building should also be able to fit passenger waiting space, customer service, and more. That led many tonight to think. And Oscar Myers has the tracks already there. At the airport, it's already really congested. You know, there's so much stuff there. Um, and there's nothing going on at Oscars. And it's, you know, a huge place, and it could be repurposed so easy. Others, like Andy Phelps, are blowing the whistle to think about the environment. For example, a downtown area, is that area going to be harder to keep dry? You know, as we, we do need some kind of projection as to the effects of climate change in the coming decades here if we're going to build something that's going to be here for the next half a century. And there will be at least two more public meetings, one in February and one in April. That's when they hope to have a recommendation for Amtrak. 
And last night, the Madison Common Council voted unanimously to approve a significant redesign of the Metro Transit system. The changes will set the groundwork for the city to introduce bus rapid transit in 2024. That means more frequent service, but fewer routes. The vote comes after the completion of a federally required Title IX equity analysis that found the redesign improves job access for the average person by at least 90% and increased access for Hispanic people by 120%. Around Wisconsin, Peshtigo first responders this week taking on their first ice rescue of the season for a dog. Calvin, the Australian Shepherd, navigated, uh, broke through from th broke through some thin ice some 200 feet from the shore. The town's fire department quickly brought an inflatable rescue boat capable of gliding over ice to help. After more than 30 minutes in the water, Calvin was pulled out of the water and was rushed to the vet where he was given the all clear. We're learning a lot of new information and court filings today as a DCI agent's criminal case waits for a decision on dismissal or recusal. Mark Wagner is charged with endangering public safety, accused of shooting Quadron Wilson in the back while trying to arrest him earlier this year. Now that happened in February, but he wasn't charged until September. A month later, Wagner's defense team asked to dismiss the case. Now they're also trying to get the Dane County District Attorney to recuse himself. They want Ishmael Ozan off the case going forward. That's because they believe he and his office would represent a conflict of interest. UW Law Professor Ion Main says he thinks the motion is just a way for Wagner's defense to get another prosecutor's perspective. And I can imagine these defense attorneys just looking at that fact going, oh my gosh, what explains why the prosecution is bringing these charges anyway? They have to be biased to bring this charge just reading the complaint because it just doesn't make sense. Maine, however, says the defense's push to get Ozan and his office removed from the case will likely be denied because it doesn't follow any legal precedent. And for extensive reporting on what we learned today about this case, including a possible connection to the fatal shooting of 11-year-old Anissa Scott more than two years ago, head to our website, channel3000.com. New details tonight about the homicide investigation near downtown. Court documents show the shooting suspect was the stepbrother of the victim. 40-year-old Edward Smith was charged with one count of first-degree murder today. Police arrested him Monday without incident. During his initial appearance this afternoon, his cash bond was set at $1 million. Smith is accused of shooting 36-year-old Shantari Riley on November 22nd. Riley was found with gunshot wounds in the area of Lakeside Street and John Nolan Drive, and he was taken to a local hospital where he later died. We have more details filed in the complaint today on channel3000.com. New at 10, the conservative Waukesha judge who just entered the race for state Supreme Court already coming under fire tonight. Judge Jennifer Doro is running as a quote tough on crime candidate, but in a recent ruling, she gave a man convicted of battery two days to report to jail. In that window, the man drove to Illinois and attacked his in-laws. Police say he fired shots into their home, broke in and stabbed them both. He's now facing additional charges in Illinois, including two counts of attempted murder. The victims are expected to survive. Also new tonight, a Michigan state judge today ordering five men to stand trial on charges involving that foiled plot to kidnap Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer. Four of them are from Michigan, the fifth from Wisconsin Dells. That trial will take place in Antrim County, Michigan, where Whitmer's Elk Rapids vacation home is located. And prosecutors say the abduction was to happen. The fight to end fentanyl overdoses taking a creative turn in Rock County, where the sheriff's office is using a vending machine to distribute a life-saving drug to save lives for free. Our Catherine Merck shares some of the data that led to the department's actions to expand access. I think it's a matter of ease of access. It's now as simple as pressing a few buttons to save someone from an overdose. So I think people are very comfortable going to a, a vending machine. They may not be quite as comfortable going to a, a person and asking for this sort of thing. The Rock County Sheriff's Office has officially launched a new program that puts a Narcan vending machine in its office lobby. The kits are free for anybody to pick up. Sheriff Troy Knudsen tells me having access to Narcan is extremely important to be able to help families from losing loved ones to fentanyl overdoses. Certainly, I guess as an agency, we go to these overdoses and they're very traumatic things. From 2020 to 2021, the overdose death rate in Rock County increased by 50%, and 80% of those deaths could be attributed to fentanyl in 2022. So if we can provide them with some sort of a tool to help them protect their loved ones as they deal with the difficulties of addiction, it just seemed like a program that made good sense for us. This isn't the first effort in our state toward opioid overdose prevention. And just one pill 
laced with fentanyl or another synthetic opioid can kill. Last month, the Dane County Board approved a new $750,000 initiative that would help expand Narcan kits, like the ones at the Rock County vending machine. I would imagine that we are going to see these more widespread around the, around the state. So, while the ways to fight drug overdoses might continue, fentanyl is still a huge issue even for those who might not think they know someone who is a drug user. That makes even the most simple steps to reduce it even more important. I think when you look about trying to keep people from dying unnecessarily, I think it makes a lot of sense. Reporting in Janesville, I'm Katherine Merck for News 3 Now. The sheriff's office got the free units of Narcan from Addiction Medical Solutions of Wisconsin Janesville, which is a Narcan direct provider through the state. The Rock County Human Services Department is funding the machines with grant money, making the Narcan kits in the machines free to the public. Some good news for the families of those fighting in Ukraine ahead of the holidays. 60 Ukrainian soldiers are returning home and 60 Russians are also headed back in a prisoner exchange. At an undisclosed location near the Russian border, two buses arrived with 60 the Ukrainian soldiers, prisoners of war, just released in that POW swap with Russia. Two women, 58 men. Some are parents, others grandparents. Most are defenders of Mariupol, the southern Ukrainian port city that fell to the Russians back in May. And in the Ukrainian city of Kyiv, we're seeing new video tonight of President Volodymyr Zelensky visiting injured soldiers at a hospital, among them an American known as Stretch, who has been serving in the International Legion of the Ukrainian Armed Forces. All of the soldiers there honor the awards for their service. And new tonight, Time Magazine has also chosen President Zelensky as their Person of the Year for 2022. Time reports Zelensky, quote, has become a face of democracy on an international scale since Russia's invasion began. Still ahead tonight, Gary will have the latest on tomorrow's Alert Day. But first, is the end of an era, the final Boeing 747 ever to be made rolls off the assembly line. That story next. What you see is important. How you see is important too. Get personalized care from experienced optometrists at Shopco Optical. Better eye care. You'll see. Right now, get 40% off lenses with the purchase of any frames. Shopco Optical. And I don't want the world to see me. Cause I don't think that they understand. When All charged up. This holiday season, Ford wants to help you shine bright with a special offer on select Ford vehicles. Choose a vehicle in stock or simply place a custom order. Lock in your rate and you're protected. Even if rates go up before your order comes in. So much. And that's how Ford is helping you, I'm proud of you kids. shine bright. <laughs> this season, choose Flex Buy on a 2022 Escape or Edge SUV and get 0% financing for 66 months at your local Ford dealer and shine bright. When moderate to severe ulcerative colitis persists, put it in check with Rinvoke, a once daily pill. When UC got unpredictable, I got rapid symptom relief with Rinvoke. Check. When UC held me back, I got lasting steroid free remission with Rinvoke. Check. And when UC got the upper hand, Rinvoke helped visibly repair the colon lining. Check. Check. Rapid symptom relief, lasting steroid free remission, and a chance to visibly repair the colon lining. Check, check, and check. Rinvoke can lower your ability to fight infections, including TB, serious infections and blood clots, some fatal, cancers, including lymphoma and skin cancer, death, heart attacks, stroke, and tears in the stomach or intestines occurred. People 50 and older with at least one heart disease risk factor have higher risks. Don't take if allergic to Rinvoke, as serious reactions can occur. Tell your doctor if you are or may become pregnant. Put UC in check and keep it there with Rinvoke. Ask your gastroenterologist about Rinvoke and learn how AbbVie could help you save. What you see is important. That makes quality eye care important too. Get personalized care from experienced optometrists at Shopco Optical. Better eye care. You'll see. Shopco Optical welcomes more insurance plans than ever. Call to book an exam and verify coverage. Bring it up. It's the final day of Mama Hood's holiday giveaway. Santa's silliest elf gets in on the surprises. 
And Sierra is in the spirit. We are the ornaments. On the next Jennifer Hudson Show at 3. You're watching News 3 Now at 10. Welcome back. Flags across the state today being flown at half staff in honor of the annual Pearl Harbor Day of Remembrance. On this day, back in 1941, the Japanese attacked the naval base in Hawaii, killing more than 2,400 people and launching America into World War II. Around the country, there were dozens of ceremonies for the annual Day of Remembrance. At Pearl Harbor itself, Pacific Historic Parks said the theme for the 81st anniversary of the attack is everlasting legacy. Organizers said the focus is the importance of remembering Pearl Harbor and how the quote greatest generation saved us from tyranny and brought up peace through reconciliation. After 53 years and more than 1600 planes, the last Boeing 747 rolled off the assembly line in the state of Washington last night on its way to serve as a cargo plane. The once groundbreaking jumbo jet with that distinctive second floor bulge is perhaps the most notable and popular plane Boeing has ever built. It was the plane chosen to carry the space shuttle. It still serves as Air Force One. Reporter Kristen Goodwillie was there when the last one rolled off the assembly line. It's been a wild ride. Silence as employees line the sidewalk to watch the 747 freighter roll out of the Everett production factory. To see it roll out for the last time, it is kind of a surreal. It's just that, that bittersweet, it's hard to fathom that it's the last time. Standing in front of us, it can hold 490 passengers, fly the length of a marathon in two and a half minutes, and its tail is as tall as a six-story building. There's a reason they call it the queen of the sky. It's the end of the queen of the skies, you know. It's pretty interesting to be a part of all this, you know. It's, it's an emotional time. David Bruton is an assembler, installer, and mechanic at Boeing. He was down in Mukilteo to watch the first 747 flight as a kid and even toured the plane. It was pretty interesting for me then, and I kind of had an interest in planes from that. Bruton has now worked at Boeing for almost 34 years, following in his grandfather and mom and dad's footsteps. I feel like it's a legacy, you know, uh, to work on this plane for me, but it's been sad to see the last one roll out. The impact of the world's first jumbo jet on aviation and consumer flying being felt by all all who witnessed the end of an era. I think it's just, you know, 747 changed aviation. It changed the way with the world connected. The last of its kind ever to be produced. They're sending the queen out very fittingly. As Boeing looks towards the future, many like Bruton reflected on how the 747 shaped not only his life, but those around the world. There's a part of us rolling out with this thing, you know. That is something. That was Kristen Goodwillie reporting. Boeing had signaled in 2020 that it would stop building the 747, even in its freighter form, as customers bought either the more fuel-efficient 777 freighter or saved money by reconditioning former 747 passenger jets. Next tonight, General Motors is planning to put thousands of electric vehicle chargers in rural America. The plan to install nearly 40,000 chargers comes amid GM's plans to sell exclusively zero zero emission passenger vehicles by 2035. They will go in places where drivers might leave their vehicles parked for a couple of hours, like parks, sports venues, or downtown shopping districts. Let's go to Chief Meteorologist Gary Kidalti, joining us now with another look at our alert day, really tomorrow night, you're saying, into Friday. Yeah, tomorrow during the day, I think will be dry. In fact, uh, yesterday it was looking like the precipitation could reach us late in the afternoon. Now it's probably more mid to late evening. Tonight, we're watching out for fog. Uh, last night, we already were under a dense fog advisory. But tonight, the fog much more patchy, mainly in Iowa, Illinois, and then closer to Lake Michigan and Wisconsin. The rest of south central Wisconsin seeing visibilities right around 10 miles. But we'll probably see some patchy fog form overnight. Shouldn't be as widespread or as dense as last night. But the alert day in the forecast is for tomorrow night into Friday. This is for accumulating snow, about one to four inches. There could be a little bit of sleep mixing in, especially tomorrow evening when the precipitation first starts. But it'll quickly change over to snow overnight. And right now, it looks like the, uh, the heaviest snow will probably fall just west of Madison. Most of southern Wisconsin probably looking at one to three inches. The actual amounts will probably depend on temperatures, a little later changeover, we end up with a little less snow. If it hangs on a little bit later in the afternoon, we end up with a little more snow. So there are still some variables in there, but generally being about one to three inch snow. The area
areas more likely to see maybe three or four inches will be north and west of Madison into uh, northern Iowa, just a narrow band in there. And there are winter weather advisories from southwestern Wisconsin through northern Iowa and southern Minnesota uh, from tomorrow evening into at least the morning hours on uh, Friday. Now, as we look ahead toward the next storm system for next week, the computer models showing less than an inch of snow. That's because now it keeps pushing the, the storm farther back. This is more now a Wednesday, Thursday time period because Tuesday will be rain. In fact, Tuesday night will probably be rain and then a change over to snow on Wednesday, uh, just kind of at the tail end of it. Now, the GFS computer model, the U.S. model, shows a potential for a, a more significant storm to our north, but notice the sharp cutoff again because most of this will be in the form of rain across southern Wisconsin. So I think the threat for any kind of a, a big storm, uh, at least for our area snow-wise, is still pretty low. But take a look at the difference in temperatures. 50s down near the Ohio River, 12 below zero right now in International Falls, Minnesota, and that's because there's a lot of snow on the ground up in the northern portion of the United States. So there's cold air to tap once these storm systems come through. It's just a question of whether it lines up with the precipitation. Uh, winter weather advisories in effect from 6 p.m. tomorrow until noon on Friday for Crawford, Richland, and Grant counties of southwestern Wisconsin. Look for skies to be variably cloudy tomorrow, so we'll see a little sunshine mixed in. High temperature at 39 degrees, but it'll be dry during the day. On future tracks starting tomorrow evening, Again, dry temperatures at or slightly above freezing as the precipitation comes in from the southwest. And this is the newest uh, computer model information showing the snow arriving even a little bit later, 2 a.m., probably into the Madison area. But by this time, mostly uh, snow here. Maybe a little rain mixed in down toward the Illinois state line where temperatures might be a couple degrees above freezing. But the rest of southern Wisconsin looking at snow uh, through Friday morning. And then as we head into Friday afternoon, it rips up and heads out to the east. And we're just left with a few flurries with temperatures in the middle uh, 30s. Again, snowfall amounts generally about a one to three inch snowfall. Areas that stay a little bit colder and have a little more precipitation out to the west might be closer to four inches. Otherwise, the uh, seven to 10 day forecast, rain and snow showers Saturday afternoon into Saturday evening, dry on Sunday with some morning fog. Then that next weather system starts out as rain Tuesday, changes to snow on Wednesday, ends up as snow and windy conditions for Thursday and Friday, but not much in the way of accumulation and cold weather as we head into next weekend. And coming up in sports, Giannis did something that a Buck hasn't done in 50 years. What he did and what the Bucks did at the Kings next on News 3 Now. News 3 Now First Warm Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. You are a friend, a neighbor a family at heart. We are Gruber Law Offices, your ally and your advocate. If you've been injured in a trucking accident, you need Gruber Law Offices to fight for you. One call, that's all. Toyota Thon is on. Now's the time to get an exciting new Toyota. Like Camry Hybrid, RAV4, Tundra, and more. Uh, how did you... Magic. Right now, during Toyotathon, get 3.49% APR for 48 months on a new Toyota Corolla, Camry, RAV4, Highlander, or Tacoma. Come in today. Toyota, let's go places. Your wedding day. Your love. Your style. Your celebration. Your wedding place. Discover the Madison Club, the city's premier wedding venue featuring multiple unique spaces, stunning lake views, and award-winning cuisine. Inclusive packages now available. Those brave men and women of our armed forces, generations of them, why should today's burdens fall back onto them? They were there for us. Now let's be there for them. Your local Wisconsin energy providers and the Keep Wisconsin Warm Cool Fund are working together to deliver Wisconsin veterans in crisis heat, power, and help staying in their home. But they can't do it alone. Call to donate today. The Internet of Things is evolving, creating the Internet of You. 
And Spectrum, America's leading internet provider, is bringing you seamless connectivity across all your devices. Introducing Spectrum One, Spectrum Internet with speeds of 300 megabits for smoother surfing, streaming, gaming, and more. Advanced Wi-Fi for enhanced security and privacy on all your devices. And one line of Spectrum Mobile with unlimited talk, text, and data and nationwide 5G included. Get it all for just $49.99 a month. Call 833-882-4999. There are still too many bad burgers out there. So Arby's is running that Wagyu Steakhouse burger back. Arby's, we have the meat. Need life insurance? Select Quote Found Jacob, 40, a $500,000 policy for only $19 a month. And Select Quote Found His Wife Wendy, a $500,000 policy for only $17 a month. Select Quote, we shop, you save. After a serious truck crash, you need a team who knows how to handle trucking cases and gets results. You need Gruber Law Offices. There's never a fee until we win. Gruber Law Offices, one call, that's all. Two times this season, Wisconsin Volleyball faced Penn State, and two times Kelly Sheffield squad walked away with a win. The first at the Fieldhouse was easy. The Badgers brought out the brooms and swept the Nittany Lions. Then it was a five-set grinder a couple weeks ago, and now the stakes are higher for the third meeting. Winner moves one step closer toward an NCAA championship, and Kelly Sheffield knows round three is going to be a knockout, dragout fight. We've come out ahead both times we've played, but uh, it almost could be a coin flip of, of how it's gone. You know, it's it's two teams that play really, really, really hard that has some big time uh, athletes on, on each side, uh, teams that, that just refuse to let the ball hit the floor. Um, it, it should be a Jim Dandy. It appears Luke Fickle has found his offensive coordinator. The Athletic is reporting that North Carolina OC Phil Longo is coming to Madison along with the Tar Heels offensive line coach. Under Longo, UNC finished 15th in the country in total offense. Now the AP released its all-conference teams and a pair of Badgers found themselves on the first team. Nick Herbig, who was a unanimous selection, and John Torchio. Braylon Allen and Keanu Benton were named to the second team. The Badger men's hockey team is playing their best hockey of the season, and it comes at the perfect time with a huge series looming. Wisconsin is coming off a stretch where they've won five of their last six games, and now it's rivalry week. UW renews the border battle with Minnesota this weekend in Minneapolis and looks to snap a three-game losing streak to the Gophers. And when it comes to this series, Tony Granado doesn't really have to say much about its history. I remember, you know, going in there and what it's like playing in Minnesota, just the rivalry. You know, lots of players on the other team that, that are high-profile players. You want to perform individually to show that you can compete with those guys. But more important, you know, your university and their university, whether it's football, basketball, hockey, or any other sport, it means something special to our community and to our school. And, and they know that. Bucks looking to make it 13 straight wins over the Kings, and you know things are going good with Giannis spotting up and splashing home the triple. That three part of a 35-point performance. It's his eighth straight game of scoring 30-plus points, longest streak in Bucks history since Kareem did it back in 72. Two-point game in the fourth, and Chris Middleton showed why they call him Cash. He knocks down the step back, and the Bucks beat the Kings 126 to 113. And the Badger women's basketball team dropped to 0-2 in Big Ten play. Wisconsin fell to Nebraska in Lincoln, 82-54. We're back after this. Happy holidays from our dwellings family to yours. Happy holidays! Power tools make great Christmas gifts, and Menards carries the best selection. Speed up your cleanups with a Dremel Versa cordless power cleaner. It scrubs away tough dirt and grime indoors or out. Right now, buy the Dremel Versa power cleaner and receive a free 16-piece cleaner set. Tackle tough projects with Bosch cordless power tools. Buy any one of these Bosch power tools and receive a free core 18-volt battery and charger starter kit instantly. Save big money at Menards. 
Ready, Dad? All charged up. This holiday season, Ford wants to help you shine bright with a special offer on select Ford vehicles. Choose a vehicle in stock or simply place a custom order. Lock in your rate and you're protected, even if rates go up before your order comes in. So much. And that's how Ford is helping you I'm proud of you, kid. shine bright. <laughs> now, get an F-150 with 2.9% financing for 60 months and 500 retail bonus cash plus 500 accessories cash. Your business is made from your DNA. Your blood, your sweat, your tears. From a gleam in your eye, you gave it what it needed to grow into the pride and joy it has become. You wouldn't dream of letting anything bad happen to it. So you lavish it with love and wrap it in the cozy warmth of the silver lining. Pamper your business with a policy from West Bend. It's a fact. Two out of three Americans who qualify for Medicare do not receive all the benefits they deserve. You could be missing out. Now, Anthem Blue Cross and Blue Shield introduces a free Medicare plan checkup to make sure you receive all the benefits you qualify for in 2023. Call 1-855-597-0884 today and receive extra benefits for a $0 monthly premium. Benefits like dental, vision, hearing, and prescription drugs. And to help you stay healthy at home, you can have free prescription drug delivery, online doctor visits 24-7, and free exercise classes. You can even receive money towards over-the-counter health items. Call 1-855-597-0884 today and feel confident you have all the benefits you deserve for 2023. You can receive extra benefits for a $0 monthly premium, like dental, vision, hearing, and prescription drugs. Call 1-855-597-0884 and make sure you're not missing out. Welcome to Dwellings. Showroom, Hard Rock Road, Fitchburg. Channel 3000 Plus. Watch from your streaming media player or mobile device. You're watching News 3 Now at 10. Finally tonight, the top trending Google search in 2022 can be summed up in a word. Wordle. The widely popular game gives players six chances to guess the word of the day. I did not even know that. But a Google rep says the second top trending search was election results as people look for the midterm winners and those we lost rounded out the top five. That would include Queen Elizabeth, Betty White, and Bob Saget. Have you played Wordle? I have never played it. I My sisters always text not. me their results <laughs> and I have no idea what it is. Have you? No. Have you? I can't no, my wife plays it. But wow. Never. Well, none of us know what they play. No, not at all. So we have no idea. Sorry, we were, we were ill-informed. We just read this stuff. I, I spend my time looking at weather. You got a lot to look at tomorrow. Yeah, uh, some fog tonight and then uh, snow tomorrow night and Friday. See you, Zach. Thanks for joining us. Do something good.